Hi, welcome to the Multifamily Man podcast powered by Total Wealth Academy. Again, um, I'm your host, Angela Webb. Um, so today I'm going to talk about something that's uh, very important and vital um, when you're purchasing a property. Um, and this really makes or breaks the deal. This is when you know, um, you know, if this is feasible, if this is the deal you want to take down. Excuse me. If this is the deal you want to take down. Um so it's called due diligence. I'm sure people have heard it. Some people say DD. Um, but there's three parts of due diligence. And um, I'm actually going to break it down and probably into three different, you know, podcasts. But um, just to name the three, it's uh, physical, financial and legal. All right. So I'm kind of going to go through the process of each one um, and kind of. Do a brief overview of what that actually means and what you need to do in that process. Um, and if anyone listening wants an actual copy of these things, um, feel free to email me at Angelo at TotalWealth.com. Um, and I can send you the one that I use. A um, bunch of great resources of different, uh, different guys and gals um, out there who do provide uh, like a checklist for due diligence. Um, you know, the one that I use specifically, I can send to you is very helpful. Um, and, uh, it, it'll help you walk you through that process and you know, you're on track and you know, you're going to get those vital things, um, because any of these things missing can really be a detriment. Um, any of these things, if you miss any of them, you know, they can pop up and, and, um, pop up and bite you on the ass later. Um, because you know, you didn't check it, you know, you didn't do your due diligence, um, it's one thing you always hear and always see in investing buyers do their own due diligence, right? Or buyers do your own due diligence. So this is a part of that process when we're talking about multifamily um, and it is extensive. It is, uh, you know, it's a big asset, man. It's not a single family home. You know, this, this is a, a tremendous asset, a very valuable asset that you're going to be using. And it is up to you to verify this stuff, right? Um, you know, I've always said trust, but verify, right? Um, so verify. Um, the biggest thing is whenever you get a OM or offer mandarin from a broker, they will give you the pro forma numbers, right? And again, what the pro forma means is imagine your grandma talking about her favorite grandson to her friends. That's what pro forma is. There is nothing bad. Right. They're catch. They're handsome. They're tall. They're wealthy. All right. They're strong. They're 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 a sweetheart. They know how to treat a lady. They, they, they're all this shit. Right. <laughs> so that's what pro forma is, man. It's for at the end of the day it's BS. Right. It's what this property could be. Right. So the due diligence is going to let you know exactly what the property is. And that is what's going to help you buy at the right price. We never buy based off pro forma, right? We buy on actuals and we have to do the due diligence to run into what the actuals is, figure out exactly what the actuals is. That's why we do the due diligence process, okay? Um, and every every price can be negotiated. You might've offered 3 million for our property and after due diligence, you see that the NOI is $50,000 lower than what they said, right? Or what you initially thought. Once you go through due diligence, that's when you start making those adjustments on, um, you make those adjustments on your offering price, or you can ask for uh, certain credits, um, repair credits. If they say it got new roofs two years ago and you go through there and you're like, bro, listen, these roofs 15 years old. All right. That's one of those things that you can look back and say, all right, listen, you said they were new. They have obvious damage. You know, our inspector, or our roofing guy says this is how much it's going to cost. Um, we would like a credit, you know, a buyer's credit or a um, repair credit at closing right and then that will you know ultimately affect what you have to bring to the table so uh but let's get into it the first one is uh physical due diligence right and it is exactly what it sounds like i mean i actually have the actual checklist here that i'm just going to go through to make sure i don't miss anything um this is what i always use you know no matter how many times i do it i always use this checklist right 
Uh, the moment we think we can just do it off the top of our head and we don't need this fundamental and basic stuff is the moment that we make a mistake, all right? So I use this. Um, so the first thing you want to do is get as-built plans and specifications, all right? You can get this at City Hall, um, and you want to know exactly what it is right you don't want you don't want their their what they say it is you want to know what it is legally on paper and this is also a good way to know if anything has been added right do they alter any of this and do they alter it without approval from the city that they add a room on they add something on without approval from the city because what can happen is once you purchase it uh you know a lot of times once you see a big purchase like that you know people from the city do come around Right. Or there are certain permits like you might go to fix up certain things and you need permits. And they're like, listen, we don't even have this down or you have something there that shouldn't be there. And then it becomes your problem. Right. So this is why you really want the built plans and the specifications. Right. So you do want to get the property condition report, soil, environmental and structural, if there are any. OK, you need to schedule and review physical inspection and it's physical inspections. All right. You need to do this physically or somebody on your team or a mixture of the two. Um, walk every unit. There's, there's walk every unit. Um, most states, all you require is 24 hours. Uh, all the owner requires is 24 hours um, to get in to any unit. So you let them know you can break it up. If it's a big property, 100 unit, do 25 a day. Right. And it's on the owner and the management company to let them know what let them know what units you will be going in on what days between what times, And you will have access to those. This is very important. All right. Um, a great syndicator that we work with here at Total Wealth Academy is uh, Robert Martinez and um, Rockstar Capital, Rockstar Management. They're amazing. Um, they just bought not too long ago. They bought a property that was huge. I think it was close to 500 doors. They their team inspected every unit except like seven because those individuals had positive covid tests. Right. So obviously they weren't going to just walk in there. So you're talking about I think it was close to 500 doors. and They got into all of them except seven. Right. You have to get into every unit and inspect every unit so you know what you're getting into. All right. Don't do 10 percent and then just, hey, these 10 percent are good. The other 90 have to be decent. That's not how it works. Get into every unit. All right. You also want to get previous appraisals if they have any. Um, you need to schedule a termite inspection if needed. Right. Some areas you might need it. Some areas you may not. Uh, you also if they are not um, owner managers and they're using a third party management, you have to get a um a review of the property manager contract, right? Um, because the way the contract is set up with the third party management company may not be a win win, right? It may be a win for the property management company, but not for the property owner. All right. So you do want to review that and see, you know, start to that's really start a process too if you're going to keep that third party management in place. But to be real, if it's a property that is a value add property like the ones that we tell you to go after, and there's a third party management company that you probably don't want to keep them there. It's a value add for a reason and it's because it's being mismanaged. So why would you keep the manager there? Right. If, you know, you know, in baseball, if the manager's doing a crap job, you change the manager. So it's no different, right? It's, <laughs> it's your organization. If the management company is doing, is doing a shit job, you get a new management company. All right. And when you do decide on that management company, make sure that that management company specializes in that type of asset okay so that means don't go find the third party manager or management company that specializes in a properties in a neighborhoods and put them in a b property in a b minus neighborhood they don't know how to operate that property okay so you find the third party management company who specialize in b properties and b neighborhoods or if you're doing a C property, it needs to be a third party management company that specializes in the C, you know, in a C neighborhood, in a C property. Those, those are all just ran different. There's certain things that you do and don't do in each one of those categories. So that management company needs to know what they're doing. Right. And um, I can help you vet them. Um, us here uh, at Total Wealth Academy, that's one of the things that we do for our members, our Comrades members. Um, we help them vet 
third party management companies. Okay. So that's something that's very important. I mean, that'll make or break it, honestly. Um, the other thing you're going to do police reports on the property. Okay. And reputation of the property. So as far as reputation goes on the property, you want to go to apartment reviews. You want to go to Google. You want to go to Facebook and you want to see the reviews. Um, if they're crappy reviews, understand why they're crappy reviews. So, you know, that's one of your starting points, right? That's one of those things that we can say, Hey, this is, this is a problem that we can already formulate a solution with. Okay. So you say, they say, Hey, maintenance is slow. If you got 20 people saying maintenance is slow, guys, maintenance probably is kind of slow. Right. And, Remember too, only the most disgruntled usually go online and post stuff, right? But if they everybody if the common thing is it's slow, you know right away, hey, our maintenance is something that they could be retrained on or the new management company has to have a stellar, you know, record of having um timely and effective and efficient um calls for maintenance, okay? And then the police reports. Police reports are huge because you'll also know the kind of clientele that you have there and the kind of residents that are there. Um, and let me put this disclaimer out, you know, in my portfolio, I've had A, I've had B, I've had C and I've had what we call war zones. I've had just as many police calls at some of my A's and I did C's. So don't automatically think that just because it's an A area that you're not going to be dealing with crazy people and police reports and all of that. So don't assume that if you're buying an A property, which I do not advise anybody that's not a insurance company or on the level of Warren Buffett and all that kind of stuff to buy a property, that's not something I would advise anybody to do unless you get a crazy deal. If you get it, if it's a, if you get a deal on it and it fits into what we think and what we classify as a deal, go after it. But more likely, it won't. More than likely, it won't. So that B or C property, you have to get a police report. You want to know what type of calls are there. Um, where is it coming from? Is it coming from a certain section of the property? Is it coming from a certain building? Is it coming from a certain person? All right. Again, when you know those things going in, it's the shit that hits you like out of the blue that hurts. Right. You ask any boxer the punch that hurts the most or hell, I was a football player. The hit that hurt the most was the one that you never saw coming and you just felt it. Right. So the due diligence, what you're doing is you want to see all these punches coming. So you can, right? Or you can meet it, right? And hit force with force. Police reports and knowing the problem individuals on the property is huge because you know going in, <coughs> you know going in is the issue. So your team can be ready to do what it needs to do. Okay. Um, interview, the again, interview the property management company. This kind of goes back with the other one. Um, it's one and the same, but you want to interview them, see what they're about, see what they specialize in. If there's a value add opportunity, you know, bring that to their attention and ask them, okay, Hey, this is what we see as an opportunity. Why haven't, you know, do you agree? Right. And if they agree, you can ask them, okay, why haven't you taken advantage of this? Why haven't you guys, um, done this? You know, why, why isn't this happening? And guys, honestly, a lot of times it could be the owners because ultimately the owners do have a lot of um, really they still have the ultimate say. OK, so they could let it know. They could. There's been times where a manager actually showed me email correspondence, correspondence between them and the owner where they told the owner, like, listen, we're three hundred dollars under the market rent. And the owner did not want to raise the rents because they feared that they would um, not be able to occupy the property. You know, they would get it fully occupied or keep it at over 90 percent. OK, so it is very good um, to or it is a necessity to interview the management company, the manager, um, the, the manager on site itself, on the site, on the side of the property itself and the management company. And you might see a lot of this stuff may not be operational for them. And it could be the owner kind of um, shooting themselves in the foot or holding them back from doing what they need to do. Um, you also want to obtain the capital improvement history for the past five years, as well as the um, capital improvements potentially needed. So you should already know the capital improvements, uh, um, the capital improvements potentially needed, right? Um, at this point, you can just go online, right? You can go online and see that. You can see exterior pictures that got on apartments.com and stuff like that to see if uh, 
finite gutters like that. I mean, you drive through it and know from the outside. Um, but it's all it's very imperative that you know um, any capital improvement they've done in the last five years. Um, so you can know if they've done anything. They may not have done anything. They may have done some things. So you can start to cross off your list of things that you don't need to do, right? Or add to the list of things that you do need to do. Um, inventory of personal property, furniture, office equipment, tools, etc., to be left behind for your use. Um, and that's kind of self-explanatory because when you buy that property, you you buy that you're buying the asset, right? So realistically, that stuff should stay there because that's part of the property, right? That's part of the company, right? So the way the office is set up, if they when you sell when they hand the keys over, the office should still have everything, right? Um, another thing is apartment rents and spaces available, right? You want to know how many turnable units they have, how many down units they have. That's important, right? Because if you're buying 100 units and 15 of them are down, you know, that means it needs a significant amount of work, right? It might be 15 are down, right? Or it might be five down, 10 are turnable, which means that they just need the work, if something is if something's a down unit, that means it needs a lot of work, right? Something turnable means hey, it needs to work. Every unit that somebody moves out, usually it's just a turn. You turn it, you rent it. Turn it, you rent it. If there's significant damage, uh, that's when it's down. So you need to know those numbers again, because that's ultimately going to affect the purchase price. Um, so the next thing you're going to be looking at is any outstanding building construction or unfinished projects. Okay, so if they started um remodeling one of the units right you need to know that or if they're redoing the gym you need to know that so you need to know any outstanding building and uh, unfinished projects because you'll have to finish them or again you can say hey based off of your numbers and verified with our numbers it's going to take another twenty thousand to finish that amenity right or those five apartments are going to take a combined twenty thousand that's a good way to get credits, repair credits, or project credits. So you have to you don't have to take as much money to close and you can get those as credits, right? Um excuse me. And ob obtain three contractor rehab quotes. That's for everything. Listen, and your management company should be doing that. And every year there should be renegotiation with contractors, period. Um so if you need a new roof even if you got a roofing guy, right, or a roofing gal, you have them come and you have two other people come or two other companies come. You should get three, um, you know, three, uh, three contractors or three companies looking at every project needs to be done. So you can always make sure that you are, you know, going with them competitive, not necessarily the cheapest. Trust me. The cheapest is not always better. They're usually cheap, especially if it's significantly cheaper, right? Um, so you want to get those, compare those, compare their bodies of work and the feel that you get from them before you make your choice, right? Um, you also want to obtain sale, sale comps, right? Um, and that's not something necessarily you'll get from them. That's something that you can look up. Um, and you just want to see what everything else sold for. Now, Remember, the property across the street may have 100 units. You may have 100 units. Yours might be worth a million. Theirs might be worth 200000 all based off the NOI. But you still want to see what things around are selling for, right? So if you have one that was considered the crown jewel of the neighborhood or the submarket and it sold for X amount, you'll know, like, hey, this is what this sold for. This is what it looked like. These were the amenities had. This is what the rents were, right? And if you ever want to know what the expenses are, you can just kind of reverse engineer it. Like it sold for this much, right? And you can just use the cap rate, right? Because a lot of this stuff still going to be up for when it was listed. You can see what the cap rate was easily. It usually tells you what the cap rate was. And you can reverse engineer it by using the sales price and the cap rate to what the NOI was. And by knowing the NOI, you can know what the expenses were. Right. You can say, hey, this is what they were charging. So this is how much, you know, about how much they're making. This is about how much the expenses were. And it actually gives you a target goal. Say, hey, we make this change, this change, this change to match that product. 
right? And then we could be worth this much. We can sell for this much or we can refinance it this much, right? So that's why it's important to know those things. Um, a perform the market survey, rent market survey, you should already kind of have an idea or this is really something you should do before you even get to this point. I always do. I always think that's important because, you know, why, why would you get to this point where you put earnest money down and you don't even know what the market rents are? Right. So this is something that is on the list, but it's something that should be done kind of quickly. Um, not as formal as this. Right. You'll actually have you can actually have a person do it or somebody in your team that could be the responsibility or you do it yourself or hire a company and see what their market survey is. You can do that as well. You also want to get aerial for pho aerial photographs, which is important. It's easy to do nowadays, especially with a drone or you can even do it on Google Maps. It's another way. Um, hire a plumber. Hire a plumber for plumbing scope. Guys, don't just get your contractor. The, don't get the jack of all trades to do a lot of this stuff, man. So when it comes to plumbing, you know, get a couple plumbers out there. When it comes to electrical, get, get electricians out there, not just contractors that can do it all. Get people that specialize in these things to look at those certain things, right? Because those are going to be the ones, like, that's all they know, right? So, like, for instance, if you go to if you go to your GP, right, your doctor, and something's wrong with your foot, they'll say, yeah, something's definitely wrong. Let's send you to a podiatrist, right? Or you say, yeah, something's wrong with my tooth. Hey, man, we need to get you to an oral, oral surgeon immediately, right? They're not going to try and fix it. They're going to send you to the people. That's what you want, right? In these situations, plumbing, electrical, and even structural, you want people who specialize in those things giving you their um, professional opinion, okay? Um, and is it zoned properly and used properly? As crazy as that may sound, I've seen people buy properties and go to make changes, get that going back and forth with the city just to find out, hey, man, this is zoned X and they're using it as this. Right. And then you'll have to go through the rezoning process. A lot of times they will let you rezone. Right. Or if things changed and um, they might grandfather it in. But if they don't, you're going to have to go through that process of rezoning, which costs money, which, again, there's more money that you invest that you have to invest in that you inspect it, inspect it. Expe I'm sorry, expect it. So what that means is if you have investors and you've given them, um, hey, these are the numbers. These are the projections. Those projections are now off all because it wasn't zoned properly and you trust it but did not verify OK. And one huge thing, contact the Chamber of Commerce and find the Economic Development Department Research Job Growth and Future City Plans. All right. So you want to know, you know, if that city or that part of, uh, of town is growing, you know, is there an upward trend? All right. And again, this is one of those things you should, you should look at um, anyway. Um, you use your free public sources to get an idea anyway and then do the deep dive with the change of chamber of commerce um, but you want to know are jobs growing right what type of jobs are they right um does the city have any plans right how awesome would it be to buy a property where the city is planning to put 50 million into the area right for parks and and um bicycle trails and all that cool stuff right um, or to develop a commercial corridor, the commercial corridor for that specific area. And the city's putting money into it or they're getting grants from the state and all this cool shit. Um, you would get in on a good, you know, you would get in good um, here in the Houston market in the third ward. The city put a ton of money into a mass, uh, a mass passion park right over there. And it's crazy because people start building brand new houses over there in, in what was a rough area. Once the city made the commitment to improve it, to improve um, the public resources like parks, um, the streets, um, the bus line, they started making those improvements to those property and investor money came like you can buy a freaking townhouse over there for like three twenty five, three fifty. Right. Three freaking story townhomes. The roof is like a sky deck. I mean, badass, you know, badass places. Um, 
but that's what happens when cities begin to invest in certain areas in certain neighborhoods or they um, or they offer tax incentives to do so for private companies. How great would it be for you to buy one of those multifamily properties in, in a part of the town where they're doing that? So you want to know that stuff. All right. Um, so that that's the checklist for uh, fiscal due diligence checklist. Um, again, that was the first one. Um, this is going to be the first of a three part series. Um, the second one that we're going to go over is the financial. Um, and we're going to talk about that next time. Again, this is Angelo Webb um, with the Multifamily Man podcast powered by Total Wealth Academy. Thank you for joining and see you guys next time.